Good evening, everyone, and welcome to historic Elida Fieldhouse, where tonight in the girls' Division Four regional semifinals, the Toledo Christian Eagles tackle with the Crest Unites. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dave Bowen and our entire WSN group. And, Dave, what a matchup we have tonight. One team, the Crest Unites, they want to kind of slow it down, make it a half-court set. The other team, the Toledo Christian Eagles, they want to fly, brother. They want to get up and down the floor. Absolutely, Danny. Great to be your wingman tonight. <laughs> That's awesome. Hello, high school basketball fans, regional semi-final action March 1st it's March Madness let's do it absolutely let's take a look at the keys for the game tonight first for the visitors the Crestview Knights no pick twos is the way we want to start with the Crestview Lady Knights you've heard of no pick sixes in football no pick pick twos Crestview cannot give away easy baskets to Toledo Christian as a result of live ball turnovers the Eagle starters collectively average 14 steals a game Danny many of those steals lead to easy buckets Crestview's got to take care of the rock Grind them in the half court. TC relies heavily on their full court pressure, as we stated. Crestview wants to flip the grid, make the Eagles play defense for extended periods of time. Do that, it'll bode well for the Lady Knights. And then finally, together, togetherness and toughness. For Crestview to win this game, every player will need to fulfill her role at an unprecedented level. Do the little things exactly right. Play together, play with confidence, play with toughness and trust in each other, and victory will be within the Lady Knights grass. And Dave, the Eagles come in at 20 and four. They play a killer schedule. A lot of D1, D2 schools. Give me some keys for their victory tonight. Well, they're gonna wanna bring this swarm right away, Danny. Toledo Christian will look to have runs on offense at a result of their tenacious 94 feet of defense. That'll happen if the Eagles can make the Lady Knights feel like there are seven or eight of them out there swarming all over the floor. Half-court execution. The Lady Knights want to force that half-court game. Coach Winsick has prepared his team for that possibility. If a half-court game evolves tonight, grit and mental toughness will need to be at the forefront for the Eagles if they want to come away with a dub. And then you mentioned it. Will the schedule pay dividends? The Eagles and Lady Knights, they played in this game two years ago with Crestview coming away with the win and advancing to the state tourney. Coach Winsick has made a concerted effort to beef up his schedule with D1 powers Dublin Kaufman, Anthony Wayne, and Rocky River Magnifica, and D4 number one ranked Tri-Village. The Eagles are battle tested. Their schedule has them ready to compete in this game, this atmosphere, this regional semifinal It's contest. the Eagles, it's the Knights, it's the regional semifinals. We'll have tip off right after these messages on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Danny over Dave Bowen. Elida Fieldhouse, Crestview, Toledo Christian, the regional semifinals, region 14. The winner will go on to play the winner of Columbus Grove and Hopewell Loudon. Tonight's officials are Jeff Ressler, Dylan Woods, and Reyes Ramirez. Take a look at our starters tonight for the Crest Unites. They'll go with number three, Macy Kolwicki, 5'6 senior at 2.4 a game. Number four, Ellie Klein is a 5'5 sophomore at 8.2 a game. Number five, Callie Gregory, she leads the night. The 5'10 junior averages 20.3 a game. Number 10, Lacey McCoy is a 5'9 senior at 8.5 a game. And rounding out the starting five, number 21, Josie Kowicki is a 5'5 sophomore at 3.4 a game. The Knights are coached by Brian Gregory. For the Toledo Christian Eagles, they'll go with number two, Kaylana Butler, 5'6 senior at 12.4 a game. They are led in scoring by number 12, Kendall Braden, a 5'8 junior at 22.7 a game. Number 11, Ava Nitsky is a 5'9 junior. Number 23, Jordan Rosales is a 5'5 senior at 9.2 a game, rounding out the starting five. Number 34, Macy Wensink is a 5'6 senior at 4.8, and she is the daughter of head coach. So, partner, we got a good one. We certainly do. It's going to be exciting. You see the brackets here right now, Toledo Christian and Crestview. Toledo Christian got here by defeating Kansas Lakota 48-46 in the district championship. Crestview defeated Ayersville 46-36 up at Defiance, and then you see our second game tonight will be Columbus Grove and Hopewell Loud. So look, these two teams played each other a couple years ago, Dave. In your opinion, can you take anything away from that game? I know the starters have changed and a lot of their rosters have changed, but can you take anything away from that? Absolutely, uh, Crestview, uh, a lot of these players were on the floor then, and then some of them were in the stands watching as eighth right. graders, but they, 
so that their uh, program, the girls at the varsity level, can play against uh, this team, this Toledo Christian team, who brings a lot of tenacity in the full court. And Toledo Christian, yeah, there was an education there as well. We got a timeout by Reyes Ramirez. I'll tell you, Coach Winston called me two weeks after that game as a principal at Crestview yeah. and said, I want to schedule you guys because that was an education for my kids down there. I need to beef up my schedule. Wow. And as we mentioned in the pregame, sure. they have definitely beefed up their schedule. Absolutely. And, and they are prepared for this type of activity. So looks Our like we've got a wet spot uh, out there. I think so. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill. Excuse me. They are proud to sponsor tonight's game. So we got that taken care of, whether it was a wet spot or some condensation or something on the floor. Crestview inbounds in front of their home faithful. They'll get it out to Callie Gregory, the leading scorer on this team. She'll swing it over to Ellie Klein, the point guard. She directs traffic out there for the Knights. They'll swing it from right to left. This is Gregory from the left side. Three ball on the way. It's off the mark. Gets her own rebound. She'll pull it down. Goes back inside of the post. Little spin move up and under. And it's off the mark. And there's a fight for the ball. And we're going to have a held ball, I believe. Yes, we're going to have a held ball. Could have could have, could have went either way, Dave. Could have been foul or held ball. Yeah, Toledo Christian opened up in man-to-man. -man. Crestview got a couple looks there. Lacey McCoy working inside. She's always aggressive. I call her the Swiss Army Knife. <laughs> she does so many things. We see the replay right here with her going up strong. Just doesn't get it to go, but she doesn't give up on it. Gets the held ball, goes to the Eagle. This is Kaylana Butler with the ball. She averages 12.4 a game. They'll swing the ball around. They'll go to the middle of the floor. They'll go back to their team leader, Kendall Braden. They talk a little bit about her. She is dynamic. She is. She can take you off the bounce. She's got the outside shot. Josie Kawicki guarding her for the Lady Knights right now as Crestview opens up in their patented man-to-man -man as well. So a little wheel action here by the Eagles as they go on the top of the man-to-man -to -man here. They go into the middle, dribble drive to the bucket. Shot goes up. It's off the mark. Gregory tried to grab it, misses the mark. She comes down, another rebound, and there you saw the athleticism of Kendall Bryant, or Brent, excuse me, Kendall Braden, as she comes in and gets the rebound. Three ball on the way, and it's good. Number 34, Macy Winsick. That's the coach's daughter, and she gets them started on the carry insurance scoreboard. Three nothing, Troy, Toledo Christian. Both teams cannot give the other team offensive boards because that's what will happen. Crestview does not check on the defensive glass, and the three-pointer results for the Eagles. Another held ball. And there oh, we got a foul. Got a foul, looks like. And there you saw the Knights posting up Callie Gregory. Is that part of her game that they really work on? Getting? It is. They see that they see where she can be effective inside and keep the guards around the perimeter. They'll put her down on the block, especially if they see a height disadvantage. And, yes, she does have some uh -huh. length. Absolutely. Good call. So here come the Knights. There's a three ball from the top of the key. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Wensick. She'll bring it down the middle of the floor. She leads the break for the Eagles. They'll swing it to the right side, go back to the middle. Crestview still in their man-to-man, 6-13 to go. Toledo Christian lead 3-0 on the carry insurance scoreboard. Danny Holbert, Dave Bowen from historic Elida Fieldhouse. There's a dribble drive in the middle. Shot goes up, a lot of contact. Rebound comes down to Gregory. She's going to take it up the right side. She's guarded by Winsick on the right elbow. Here she goes down the side. Not going to be a place for the faint of heart in the paint, as you Absolutely. said. Absolutely. A lot of contact, no call. Going to let him play here. There's a steal. There's a steal. Klein loses the ball. And then you see Kendall Braden lose the ball. Here comes Callie Gregory. Three ball from the right side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Eagles, and they're up and running. Here come the Eagles. This is Jordan Rosales. She'll go to the middle. And that's what they like to do, Dave. They like to get it out in transition. Crestview gets back. They can't get the easy bucket in transition off the rebound. They're going to set things up. And again, this is where Coach Winslet has said, we're going to have to execute in the half court. And thus far, they've had one possession in the half court where they got the offensive rebound in the three. And there you saw Braden with a little crossover. She goes up the baseline, and she's going to go to the foul line, and she was fouled. Josie Kawicki picks up the personal. You're right. That crossover is deadly from Kendall Braden. She as you said, averages 23 points per game, the leading score for Toledo Christian. Callie Gregory, 20 points for the Knights. Brayton is also the leader on her team at the free throw line, shooting 85%. So she goes to the first one, and she misses that one. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus is our free throw sponsor. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Kendall Brayden misses the first one. She's got the second one. 
She eyes it. She lets it fly. She knocks it down. Dave, she's being we were told by her coaches she's being recruited by 14 Division I schools right now, only a junior. Only a junior getting all those looks. And, again, I know the Crestview coaching staff is very impressed with what they saw on film. Now they're seeing it live. Here's Ellie Klein. Nice dribble drive up the baseline. Shot goes up, and she's going to go to the line. And she was fouled by Jordan Rosales. So a little bit of foul action here in the first quarter. Coach Gregory is going to be very pleased with Ellie Klein attacking the basket. We're going to see it on the replay. Here she comes, drives to the right baseline, draws the contact, going to go to the free throw line where she is second for the Lady Knights at 71%. She knocks that one in. Another Lee's famous recipe foul shot there. So four to one on the carry insurance scoreboard. Second on the way, and it's good. Four two to five oh six to go. Here come the Eagles, led down the floor by Kendall Braden, junior guard, going up against Macy, Macy Kowicki. Yeah, absolutely, Macy Kowicki trying to stay with her. Step back three on the way, and it's good. And there's a foul on the shot. There you see the athleticism of Kendall Braden as she's fouled after the shot. Makes it 7-2 on the carry insurance scoreboard. Watch her step back here, Danny. So impressive. People don't realize when it's done so well like that right there, looks so beautiful, how much strength you have to bring to the table to make that shot. Dave, that's a lot of practice time in the summer in the gym. That, that, that looked effortless right there. And there you see coming into the game right now is Mackenzie Royal Davis. And the reason I emphasize Mackenzie Royal Davis coming into the game, she has not played the last two games. Yeah, she has been under the weather, but she is the second leading scorer for this team at 14 points per game. They made the three. They called that foul after the called shot. It after, so they gave him the ball back. So a huge break for the Eagles. There's a steal there and a nice job by Ellie Klein. She gets it out. Here come the Knights on the outrake. Lacey McCoy up the right side. Dribble drive, ball stolen by Braden. And we've got another jump ball, another held ball. Going to go Crestview's way. But, yeah, Braden with the, with the hands right there, getting a hand on that basketball, creates the held ball tie-up with Lacey McCoy. Crestview's got to take better care of the rock, one of our pregame keys to the game. And we'll keep fading back to those keys, Dave. And we'll watch how important those are in this game. Nice post play by Callie Gregory as she gets her man on the backside and uses the left hand, takes yes. it up, knocks it in, makes it 7-4 on the carry insurance scoreboard. I knew the astute commentator that you are. You would pick that <laughs> left hand up. That was really, really nice. There's a three ball from the left side. Rebound comes down to Gregory. She'll bring it down the middle. Callie Gregory, she just knocked in the deuce. She looks to lead these Knights to another big victory. I'll go out to Ellie Klein. She'll swing it to the right side. This is Macy Kulwicki, back to Gregory. Three ball from the left side, off the mark. It was almost in and it comes right out. Here come the Eagles down the middle of the floor. They'll take the break right up. And we've got contact in the middle of the floor and they're gonna say a, looks like a blocking foul. Yeah, able to get just around McCoy is Kailana Butler. Watch her come here, great replay, just steps to the side. And Dave, there you see the pressure the Eagles put on you defensively. Every rebound on the opposite end is coming down fast. Yeah, that Crespio taking a three-pointer. Sometimes a three-pointer, when it doesn't go in, it's just an outlet pass for the defense or Toledo Christian in this situation. And yeah, they push the ball up with authority. Kalana Butler hits another one. Lee's famous recipe chicken and lima Wapak and Delphus is our free throw sponsor. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken. Home style happens here. So she knocks the first one in. She'll go after the second one. Off the front rim. A big time rebound by Royal Davis as she falls down and no call was made. A lot of contact and we've got a knight down on the floor and it is number 21 for the Crestview Knights. That's Josie Kowicki. And she looks like she's hurt a little bit, Dave. We're going to see it here on the replay. Kennedy Kreider checking out Royal Davis. And then Royal Davis inadvertently just comes yes, down, just on came down on her back. Yeah. But, but Crespi was trying to pinch Royal Davis. And that's what you want to do in that situation. It's just that in that situation, Josie Kowicki took the brunt of the uh, punishment, yes, if you will. Did. Entering the game for the Knights now, number 15, Kennedy Kreider is in the game. So there's the pressure at half court. And you see. 
They're trying to speed the Knights up, and you see a turnover there. Yeah, nice 1-2-2 half-court trap by Toledo Christian. Forces the travel, the turnover. It's a dead ball turnover, and Coach Gregory's going to call a timeout. So Coach Gregory will take a timeout. We'll take a timeout here with 3.36 to go. Troy Christian, Toledo Christian leads 8-4. Welcome back to Elida Fieldhouse. Daniel Burke, Dave Bowen. We're with 3.36 to go in the first quarter. The Toledo Christian Eagles are out to an 8-4 lead over the Crestview Knights. David, does it seem like Crestview's just having a little trouble getting into rhythm here? Yeah, great timeout by Coach Gregory. I, I was going to say that, absolutely. The rhythm piece, you nailed it there, Danny. Uh, Crestview really needs a good defensive stand. I know they're only down by four. It feels like a lot more. And there you see the pass into Royal Davis, and you see how she can get her body down low in the low post, and she misses that one. Here comes Callie Gregory in the Knights, down 8-4 with 3.13 to go. Toledo Christian still in that man defense. They'll go down to the low post. This is McCoy with the ball, guarded by Royal Davis. McCoy tries to take it up. Thought about shooting, she'll swing the ball out to Gregory. Gregory gets a screen. There's a three ball from the right side, and she nails it. Callie Gregory knocks in the triple, and she closes the gap at 8-7 with 2.45 to go. Go ahead, David. Yeah, you can't celebrate. Here no, comes right. Toledo Christian. So Christian brings the ball down the floor, down the left side, and they knock in the deuce to make it 10-7. You're absolutely right, Dave. I start to talk, and all of a sudden, they come down the floor. Yeah, Kaylana Butler with the field goal. You got to get back and play transition defense. There's another three ball on the way. That's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Royal Davis, who had great position. Callie Gregory with a steal. She's going to take a little jumper from the left side. It goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Eagles. They throw it back in. It'll go back into the night. Shot goes up, and it's good. There you saw Lacey McCoy get great position on Royal Davis. She knocks the deuce in to make it 10-9. First quarter action, punch, counter punch, 10-9, like you said. Here we go. <laughs> Here come the Eagles. They're back again. Rebound comes down. Rebound is corralled by McCoy, and McCoy and Royal Davis. And Royal Davis looking at the official, wanting the foul as they were battling. They're letting them play tonight, Dave. They yeah, are letting, letting them play. Letting them play. We're going to see the WSN replay right here. Lacey McCoy with the rebound. Royal Davis reaches in. Could have been a reach in. Could have been a foul. On, I was going to say, could have went either way. Absolutely. Yep. Number 23, Jordan Rosales will take it in right in front of the WSN booth here. She'll trigger the ball in. Goes out to the left side, goes to Kendall Braden. They'll swing it around. Three ball on the way, off the mark. Rebound comes down to McCoy, and she is playing with a purpose right now, Dave. Lacey McCoy is just getting after it on the rebounds. Yeah, she's got great muscle twitch. Like, like I said, Swiss, Swiss Army knife, but there and it goes. And there you saw Klein. Ellie Klein with the acrobatic, how do you like me now, gives the Crest Knights the 11-10 lead with 129 to go, and this place is jumping. Just a great penetration move by Klein, testing that Toledo Central, or Toledo Catholic, or <laughs> Toledo <laughs> Christian defense. There you saw Kendall Braden <laughs> says, whatever you can do, I can do better. She is a player. Toledo Christian up 12-11 on the carry insurance scoreboard. There's a steal from Braden. She's going to come down, taking herself on the left side. She'll put it up, and she knocks it in. Kendall Braden. She's got eight on the night, and Toledo Christian leads 14-11. We got a timeout on the bench. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill. They are proud to sponsor tonight's game. Look, partner, I'm, I'm trying to keep up here, and usually I'm not a loss for words because I can talk a lot, but these girls are like thoroughbreds. They are getting up and down the floor. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Too. This is a great, great <laughs> game, and we're only in the first quarter. <laughs> we're going to be we're gonna be exhausted. <laughs> yes, yes, but just great action. Again, that timeout by Toledo Christian. Right after they got a light ball turnover right. and scored, something Crestview cannot allow to happen, but now the timeout. Toledo Christian's going to extend their defense to full court. They're going to go full court and see if they can't get it. Crestview to speed the game up here or turn the ball over. And a nice job by Crestview getting the ball down low. And there you saw number 15 for the Knights. Kennedy Kreider puts in the deuce and she gives the Knights, closes the gap, excuse me, at 14-13 with 45 seconds to go. And there you saw Toledo Christian throws the ball away. You saw Kaylana Butler got behind the Crestview defense, but she just falls down, Dave. Yep, got to get your feet set there a little bit. But again, that speed, sometimes you get it going a little too fast. Crestview, very 
patient, quick against that pressure. They had their head up, got the ball down the floor, found Kreider for the easy layup. And so far, so good with Crestview handling that pressure from the there Eagles. It is and there again. you see again, Kreider with another. Oh. oh, she misses a shot, tries to get her own rebound, and we're going to have look like a foul. And we got one official calling one thing, and they're going to get together to clear this up. Let's see what they call here because they had separate calls. I think it's they're, just going to go yep, they're just gonna say the ball went out of bounds. Yep, ball went out of bounds. Right call. Yep, absolutely. So Coach Wesnick there, he didn't say anything, so I think he agrees with you. <laughs> 30.7, are you going to hold it for the last shot? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I don't think uh, Toledo Christian holds it for anybody. No, right? exactly. Offense, it's just get and go. So here come the Eagles. They're up 14-13 with 20 seconds to go. Ball goes into the corner, goes out of bounds, and it's going to go back to Toledo Christian. Yeah, Kennedy Kreider right there gets a hand on it. She's made an impact on this game coming in for Josie Kowicki there early on when uh, Kowicki was injured a little bit. She scored, she's been effective on offense, and there defensively does a nice job. So the Eagles will take it inbounds right here, get the ball to the middle of the floor. And guarded heavily. There's a dribble drive to the baseline. Nice pass across the baseline. They'll swing it back around. This is Macy Winsick. She's going to throw the three ball up, and she knocks it in. Macy Winsick knocks it in. And that will do it after one quarter from the Elida Fieldhouse. The Toledo Christian Eagles are soaring with a 17-13 lead. You're watching High School Girls Regional Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Daniel Rick, Dave Bowen, and here you see Dave, that three, and it was way out there by Macy Wednesday. And I don't know that she was supposed to shoot that out there. I'm not sure that's what they drew up. Yeah, but it was the end of the <laughs> quarter. She had her feet set, yeah. took her time. She, averaged five, she averages five points per game. Only shoots 30% from three, but looked really, really pretty right there. In the first quarter, Crestview, five for 13 from the floor for 38%. Uh, Toledo Christian, six for 14 for 43%. The Knights, two for two from the line. Toledo Christian, two for four. Turnovers, Crestview only has two, but one of them was definitely a live ball turnover that resulted in a layup. Toledo Christian with four, and Toledo Christian has out-rebounded the Knights eight to four. So the Knights will take the ball to start here the second quarter. Callie Gregory will swing it around to the right side. This is Macy Colwicki. She looks to push the ball towards the basket. Toledo Christian in a zone. Now 2-3 zone, first possession of the quarter. Just giving Crestview sure. a different look here. This is Gregory on the side, going against that zone. She'll dribble drive up top, goes behind her back. She's smooth, Dave. She's really smooth when she handles that ball. There's a nice drive to the middle. Ball gets knocked away. Here come the Eagles. Here comes Kendall Braden. Try to push the ball down low. This is Braden from the three line. She'll, she'll shoot, she'll step back. She's not afraid to dribble drive. There's a nice pass inside as she tries to go inside to number 11, Ava Knightsky. So turnover on Toledo Christian. They had a break out there, just didn't quite connect on that pass. And as a result, Crestview was able to recover and set their defense, forcing the turnover. So here's Gregory. Gregory's guarded out top by Winsick. So the coach's daughter's out there going head to head in this one. And they've been rotating players on Gregory thus far in this game, keeping fresh players on her. There they go, they'll go to the middle of the foul line. Lacey McCoy loses the ball and got a little bit of a tie up there. They'll separate them there, so no feelings hurt. But you see the intensity on both of these squads tonight. You can tell. If you yeah. watch right here, they try to go middle. We see the carry insurance replay. Again, Crestview's got to be more cognizant of a player coming from behind or the side when they've got the basketball. They've had three or four held balls as a result of someone coming and attacking from uh, another player, leaving their player and double teaming. I've been impressed with Toledo Christian's help side defense. Yes. And that's what created, that, that is what has created opportunities for them to do just that. There's Royal Davis with the ball. She'll go back up top to Braden. Braden will swing it around. They'll go Jordan Rosales. They'll go back inside to Royal Davis. Royal Davis triple team. Three ball from the left side. It's on the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Knights. This is Callie Gregory up the left side as she takes it in. Guarded by two. A little spin move. She's going to go up with the ball. She's going to be fouled. And she's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw strike. So how do you fight pressure? With pressure. With pressure, absolutely. Toledo Christian wants to play full court defense. That was off a missed shot. They're looking to get a steal on the outlet pass. What does Crestview do? They connect and they attack the basket. Callie Gregory going to the free throw line. So Callie Gregory, the 5'10 junior, averages 20.3 a game. 
and she misses the first one. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So with 6.19 to go, the Toledo Christian Eagles continue to lead. She knocks the second one in, and that makes it 17-14 on the carry insurance scoreboard. Again, on that breakaway, Toledo Christian able to recover. Both squads have been able to recover and get a hand on the ball. Nothing is clean. Crestview now shows 2-3 zone. So here comes Kendall Braden. We know from watching her that she will take that shot out there, and you've got to put a man on her, or she will continue to drive her back. There's Royal Davis, three ball from the outside. That's off the mark. Comes down to Callie Gregory. Gary takes it up the middle. Nobody's guarding her. She gets all the way to the foul line before she – nice spin move with the left hand, and it goes off the mark. Callie Gregory had a perfect opportunity there, and they're going to say another held ball opportunity. Gregory goes coast to coast, rebound to the basket. It doesn't go for her. Couldn't punch her ticket to finish the ride, but Crestview maintains possession. So Crestview's going to take it out underneath their basket. 5.46 to go. This is Gregory. They, they do a nice job of cutting that baseline off very well. You know, they defend very well. You can tell they work at it. And look, defensively, they only give up 33 points a game. So they, they, they get after it on the defensive end. There's a nice dribble drive by Kreider. She loses the ball. Here comes Kendall Braden. She'll go up the middle of the floor, take it herself, and she knocks it in. Kendall Braden, there you see the athleticism. She's got 10 on the night to lead all scores. And Toledo Christian leads 19-14. Completely under control the whole time. She knew who she had on her left and her right, got to the middle of the paint, and just elevated over the defense. Scores that bucket. Kendall Braden, you can see why yeah, she she's did. getting some looks. Yeah, you just see how, how cool and calm she is. Huh? There's a pass to Gregory on the left side. Off the mark. Just a little bit out of her range. We'll go back to Toledo Christian. Callie Gregory knows that she's got to score for her team. Sure. She does. But right now, maybe she's forcing the issue a little bit. Maybe she's a little too deep. I mean, she was wide open on that look. Get her feet up at the three-point line where she's a little more comfortable. Or look at get to the basket, see that ball go through the basket, sure. draw a foul, get to the free throw line. Yeah, she's got to shoot it, but she right now is struggling a little bit from the field. She feels that pressure a little bit, would you agree? Yeah, just a little. Yeah. So here come the Eagles. This is Jordan Rosales as she brings the ball down the floor. Jordan Rosales is a 5'5 senior who averages just under 10 points a game. They got scores, Dave. They go 22-7, 12-4, 14-4, and almost 10 a game. So they got four girls that will go double figures any time. So Crestview is in zone or a, uh, well, a, a box <laughs> and one. They also run what is called a tandem, and if I see that, I'll be able to tell you about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm But right now, sure. <laughs> and see... They're Toledo leaving. Christian's just going to say, okay, we're going to make you come out and guard us. And we're happy with the five-point lead. But now they're starting to run their action. So Toledo Christian, oh, double-team action up top on, on Braden. They're going to make somebody else beat him. They'll swing it around. This is Braden. So back to Rosales. Rosales from the three-point line, and she banks it in. Jordan when Rosales. Day. <laughs> when it's your day, it's your day. And right there, she shot it with confidence, so why not? She makes it 22-14 on the carry insurance scoreboard. So Coach Wesnick from the Eagles is imploring the, home, or the, the crowd behind him to get on their feet as they have taken a nine-point lead here early in the first half. And we've got another held ball. And that possession is going to go back to Toledo Christian. So it's a big defensive possession here for Crestview right now. They don't want to go down double digits. We're going to see the WSN replay. Ellie Klein gets in there, but Royal Davis is just waiting for her. And that's who gets the held ball. Not the girl guarding her, but the help side defense. Right, and you saw on the replay there, Royal Davis does a great job of not overextending and just getting the ball so there's no foul called right there. So here comes Braden with the dribble drive in the middle. Thought she was going to take it up. Three ball on the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down. Goes back to the Eagles, and there's going to be a foul. Ava Nitsky with the great offensive rebound. See it here on the carry insurance replay. Just gets it off the rim. And goes it, back up strong. Gets the foul called on Kennedy Kreider. A great job by Nitsky. She did not hesitate. The ball went up, and she took it straight back up. So Nitsky will go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. First one on the way, 
and it's off the mark with 3.12 to go. Toledo Christian continues to lead 22-14. So coming back into the game for the Knights is Lacey McCoy. Kreitz will take a seat. McCoy gives them more of an offensive advantage. And not, not taking away anything from Kreitz, but I think McCoy gives them more of an offensive set. So their second one's on the way. Custody back to the starting five out there. Here comes Toledo Christian's full court man-to-man -man defense right now. Ellie Klein's going to clean it out a little bit, take it up herself. Klein being pressured by Rosales. And there you saw Klein turn a little bit, and Rosales comes across her body. And we've seen that enough to know that's going to be called every time. 14 foul on the Eagles. So no, no, uh, no panic from Crestview right now as they have had basically relatively low problems getting it across half court. So they feel confident in what they're doing here with 3.04 to go. So Klein will bring the ball up. She is guarded out top by Macy Winsick. There's a lot of pressure up top. As they get the ball back to Lacey McCoy. McCoy swings it to the corner. This is for Wiki. Wiki back to McCoy. Nice dribble drive with the left hand by Ellie Klein. And just what the doctor ordered as she stops the drought there. And it makes it 23-16 on the carry insurance score. You're exactly right about that, Danny. Good medicine for Crestview. Ellie Klein with the up fake. Uses the rim and gets to the left side. Uses the left hand. And again, <laughs> Kendall Brayton right now with the basketball. She's in charge and everybody else knows it right now. Woo! Step back from the three throw line and she knocks it in. And there you see another foul after the shot. Kendall Brayton right now is just electric. Dave, she's, she's a problem right now for the Knights. Absolutely. That doesn't just happen. She put on about three crossovers. We're going to see it here on the replay. And then the step back again on the carry insurance replay. Josie Kowicki fouls her on the checkout. Braden shooting one. Knocks it. Oh, misses that one. So a rare miss by Kendall Braden. She's got 12 on the night to lead all scores. And makes it 25-16 on the carry insurance scoreboard. So Different okay. defensive looks. Toledo Christian now in the 1-2-2, three-quarter court press. Ellie Klein with her head up, reading it. Klein looks to swing the ball around. No go corner, go back into the post. Callie Gregory, shot moves off the mark. Rebound comes down to Kaylana Butler as she leads the break. Thought about a step back three there. Butler dribble drives into the middle, and she is confronted and fouled. And they're going to get number four, Ellie Klein, on the foul. 16 foul for the Knights, so it's a non-shooting situation. See it here on the carry insurance replay. Good penetration. Ellie Klein just doesn't quite get to the basketball. Get some arm in there. And here you see Mackenzie Royal Davis check back in the game for the Eagles. As they lead 25-16 with 1.49 to go, they'll trigger the ball right here in front of our booth. They'll go back into Royal Davis. Ball gets batted away. Here come the Knights. Ellie Klein with the steal as she goes up the left side. She's going to take it all the way in, tries to take the shot. She's going to be fouled. And they are going to get, let's see, number 34 for the Eagles. That is Macy Wensick on the foul. And that will send that young knight to the free throw. Line. Yeah, Ellie Klein gets the steal, as you said. Lacey McCoy with another deflection, though, that, that uh, Ellie Klein was able to reel in. Klein, second on this team at the free throw line at 71%. The Knights need both of them here. Klein knocks the first one in. You're absolutely right, Dave. With the clock stopped, they need all the points they can get. Makes it 25-17 on the carry insurance scoreboard. Klein attacks hard there on the left side, and you see the foul by Macy Wensick. Great replay. Coach Wensick and the Eagles are going to take a timeout. We'll step aside with 1.39 to go. The Toledo Christian Eagles lead 25-17 right here on WOSN. Tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So one free throw down, one more to go here, Dave, as Ellie Klein steps to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line, and they need these in a bad way. Yeah, uh, interesting timeout from Coach Winsick. Uh, minute 39, I think he's talking to his troops about let's deliver a little bit of a knockout punch, but yeah. I think it's a good timeout for Crestview sure. as well to regroup. Let's see what happens. So she knocks in the second one. A little pressure by the Knights here. Interesting. So let's see how the Eagles handle the Knight pressure here. 
go to the middle. He'll swing it back. Kalana Butler. Butler loses the ball. Ball's on the deck. She's going to go across half court to pick it up. No over and back as everybody touched that ball. Butler out top. She's guarded by Ellie Klein. They'll swing it over to Macy Lindsay. Back over to the leader, Kendall Braden. Every time she touches the ball, the entire gym kind of goes ooh and ah. She is a player. Eagles being very patient on offense. Under one minute to go. They lead 25-18 in the second quarter. It's interesting. Maybe this was the purpose of Coach Winsick's timeout. And let's let's use the rest of the quarter. But here comes here comes Braden. She'll Braden, go that yeah. way. <laughs> she goes back to the middle, takes the shot up off the, off the glass. Are you kidding me? Kendall Braden is knocking in everything. She is making some phone calls, and the Knights have no answer. 27-18 <laughs> on the carry insurance scoreboard. The kiss off the window right there. Very impressive. It's Callie Gregory out top. We're under 18 seconds to go. Knights down 27 18. They need a big bucket here to end the first half. Callie Gregory, she'll dribble drive to the foul line, spin around a little bit. Thought about taking the three. Gregory tries to cut back door. Ball goes off of an Eagle defender and it goes out of bounds. It'll go back to Knights with 3.5 seconds to go. I love the backcourt or back cut there yeah, by I did Gregory. Too. I like the play, absolutely. Great deflection, though, by Toledo Christian. Here's, here's <laughs> Braden coming too. The middle of the paint. Nice defense by Josie Kawicki, just better offense. There's Gregory from the outside, knocks it in, and that's exactly what Crestview needed. It's not a three, it's a two. So after one half of basketball from historic Elida Fieldhouse, the Toledo Christian Eagles lead the Crestview Knights 27 to 20. When we come back, we'll have second half action right here on WLSN. Welcome back to the United Fieldhouse, where after one half of play, the Toledo Christian Eagles lead the Crestview Knights 27-20. Danny Holbrook alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, we saw the athleticism of the Eagles. They got out and run. They pressed. They, they brought all the, uh, the should I say, all the toys out of the closet because they really got after the first Yeah, half. we saw the full arsenal. They yeah. liked pushing the pace. They were able to do that off of rebounds and made shots. Coach Wensick's telling his group we want to keep doing that. And if we get a couple steals, we could possibly blow this thing wide open. Kendall Braden Br has just had a half. Six for six from the floor, four steals. She is, as advertised, Crestview's got to find an answer. If they look to double her, Toledo Christian spacing is so good that it's hard to double her, first of all. Second of all, she'll find the open teammate. And in Crestview, they got to get Callie Gregory going. I'd like to see her get down on the block. We saw that early. I think that's really effective, Dave. Yeah, she's got to see the ball go through the basket a little bit, either via the power shot or getting fouled and getting to the free throw line. And then she can extend her game back out behind the arc where she can be just as deadly. So Crestview will get the first possession here in the second half. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Carey Insurance in Grover Hill. We are proud to sponsor tonight's game. So here come the Knights. They're down 27-20 as we start the third quarter here. Danny Holbrook, Dave Bowen from a light of field house. And there is a nice shot from the baseline that goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Kendall Braden. Braden leads all scorers right now with 14 as she goes to the foul line. She'll kick it back out to Kaylana Butler. Butler takes the shot. And we're going to say Kaylana Butler charged in as a Nice defensive play there by the Knights as they held their ground. They take the charge. Here you see the charge. Watch Lacey McCoy rotate over. She takes it. There's the Swiss Army Knight. Does a great <laughs> job defensively. And Crestview, they need to take advantage of that now. Great stop defensively. Find yourself a bucket on offense. Get yourself going here early in the third. Cut into this seven-point deficit. Dave, I want to ask you a philosophical coaching question. Are you surprised that Toledo Christian showed everything before halftime? I mean, they showed a lot before halftime. Well, when you throw the kitchen sink at them, it, it doesn't matter sure. as much. And I hear I hear your question, but when you're throwing so much at the opponent, they've got so much to talk so about. Much, yeah, they only so much time. Yeah. yeah. So here come the Knights as they go back down to the low post. And a nice up and under there. You saw Ellie Klein miss the shot, but she got really good position for the Knights. And we're going to have a carry. They carried the ball as Macy Wensey carries the ball. Crestview's had two offensive possessions where they've been able to get by the first girl, but not the second. Again, 
credit to Lido Christian and their defensive rotation, their help side defense. It's making it very, very tough on the Lady Knights right and, now. And Dave, I don't know if you saw that, but Kendall Braden just looked at all of her teammates and said, calm down, settle down. We've got the lead. So nice leadership role there by Braden. Here come the Knights down 27-20. They try to swing it around. Callie Gregory on the left side. She'll dribble drive baseline. Nice job moving inside. And Callie Gregory uses her body and pushes off and scores the bucket today at 27-22. That may be what the Knights need right there. No place for the weak at heart going Absolutely. into the paint at Little Mecca, the Elida Fieldhouse. Callie Gregory gets it done. Toledo Christian answers. And Kendall Braden comes right back at you. So we've got a full-blown take that kind of war here with 626 to go 29 22 and you're seeing two of the best players in northwest ohio and kendall braden and callie gregory going at it gregory from the three line that she misses off the mark rebound comes down to the knights they'll take it straight back out almost in and they'll have two shots from the lee's famous recipe chicken free kick. josie kawicki hits the boards hard there along with lacy mccoy the deflection goes to kawicki she draws the personal Josie Kawicki goes to the line. She's a 50% free throw shooter for these Lady Knights. Dave, are you sure she's 5'7"? Because she rebounds like she's 6'7". She gets right amongst the trees, though, and she knocks the first one in. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lime on Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. We see the replay right there. Gutsy play by the Kawicki girls, Macy and Josie, sister, senior, sophomore, dad, a Crestview Knight back in his day. Whole family involved, so she knocks two in there, and it makes it 29-24 on the carry insurance scoreboard. So Crestview hanging around here. Toledo Christian, excuse me, can't get that lead they want to get. Here comes Royal Davis bringing the ball up as she spins around, and they're going to say she was fouled on the shot. She'll go to the line to shoot two. She did a real nice job of jump stopping down there on the left block before she spin to the 10. If she would have kept going, I really think Crestview was set up for a charge. There was some contact but in the official's mind, and correctly so in my opinion. Not enough for an offensive char charge. And then uh, she was hit on the arm in the sh act of shooting. So Mackenzie Royal Davis misses the first one. Yeah, and she's a 79% free throw shooter. We see the replay. See if, how we do right there again. Kawicki, Macy style, she stepped over, but give Royal Davis the credit in jump stopping right there, not committing the charge. Second one goes in, makes it 30-24 on the carry and serve swimming. And there you saw how really Good footwork that Royal Davis has as she goes coast to coast and gets fouled. Again, we saw her here the last two years, but two years ago against Crestview. Callie Gregory goes up the left side. She tries to take it in, and they're going to say a held ball. And she was really hounded by Kaylana Butler. Could have been a foul, Davis. She comes across Callie Gregory. Here comes the carry insurance replay. We see her attacking. There's the missed opportunity there as they get to the rim. So here comes Rosales and the Eagles. They're up 30-24 with 5.40 to go here in the third quarter. Danny Holbrook, Dave Bowen from the Elida Fieldhouse. It's regional semifinal action in Division Four. Well, it goes on to play the winner of Hopewell allowed to Columbus Grove in our second contest tonight. Royal Davis up top. You see her using that dribble as she goes in to the middle. Nice back cut there by Braden. Shot goes up, and they're going to say Braden travel. So Kendall Braden gets the travel call. So unlike her, as she's not gotten off to the greatest start here in the third quarter. And one of the reasons why Coach Gregory has made the adjustment, he's putting Callie Gregory, his daughter, on Braden this half. 1A on 1A. 1A on 1A. <laughs> the Queens on the chess Yep, board. absolutely. So here come the Knights down 30-24. Gregory with the ball out top. She's guarded on top by Kaylana Butler. They'll swing it around. Nice jump fake there. She goes in the middle. Shot goes off the mark. The officials come together to make the call. I think they're going to get Royal Davis on the foul. Here we see it on the Terry Insurance replay. Kowicki with or McCoy with the penetration. Macy Kowicki gets the rebound. And they're going to call the foul, I believe, on number two, Kaylana Butler. No, they call it on 13. McKenzie Royal Davis. Yeah, there you saw Lacey McCoy with the athleticism and the pump fake and going to the rim. Ball goes back into Gregory. Gregory with a nice spin move. She knocks it in. Callie Gregory makes it 30-26 on the carry insurance scoreboard. Gregory's got 12 to lead the Knights. 
Nicely done for Crespi on the under out of bounds set to cut the lead to four. So Royal Davis brings the ball up and there you see some nice moves of handling the ball. The ball goes out of bounds and will go back to Toledo Christian. So there you see Mackenzie Royal Davis not afraid. To, what a luxury to have a six foot post girl that can bring the ball down the floor. Bring the ball down the floor. Great footwork right there. Nice, Luxury nice indeed. Player. Nice player. So they'll go back inside Royal Davis. Royal Davis will get it. Tried to get it to Kendall Braden. Royal Davis is just going to take it. Nice job of using her body. Takes it up from the left side. And that's understanding situational basketball there. And it's 32-26 on the carry insurance scoreboard. I think Coach Winslick pulled her aside. Said Crespi is going to make an adjustment on Kendall Braden. I need you to step up when you get in the game, and she has done that. And Lacey McCoy tries to take it in, gets her own rebound as the ball got deflected. She tries to go up, and they're going to say she traveled, which she did. And the ball goes back to the Toledo Christian Eagles. Sometimes Lacey McCoy goes 70 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour <laughs> speed zone. We see it right here. I like everything she's doing, but she just right there, yeah. shuffled the puppies and give, again, Royal Davis credit defensively just walled up right there. And the Eagles have taken McKenzie Royal Davis out of the game. Now, we talked about this earlier. She has not played in two games. Talked to the coaching staff before the game. They told us she had an illness, so they are using her in spots, and when she's in the game, she's very effective. Yeah, I'm sure her cardio is not where it's been sure. throughout the season. So great coaching on uh, the Toledo Christian coaching staff sideline right now. Here's Kendall Braden. She's guarded by Callie Gregory up top. Braden goes in the foul line, a little up and under. Shot goes up, and it dribbles in. Kendall Again, Braden. Yeah. She's got 18 to lead all scores, and it's 34-26 on the carry insurance scoreboard. Great defense, just better offense. Callie Gregory all over her. Kendall, Kendall Braden special. Ball swings around to the left side. Goes back to Ellie Klein. Ball goes to the top. Key dribble drive to the middle. They'll try to kick it back out. Ball's going to go out of bounds and it'll go back to Crestview. So there you saw Macy Kowicki lose the ball and it went out of bounds. Crestview cut the lead to four, 30-26. Toledo Christian, they answer with a 4-0 run of their own to push it back to eight. A great job of the Eagles of keeping distance between them and the Knights. And there's a steal as Callie Gregory tries to trigger the ball in in front of her bench. Here come the Eagles. This is Kaylana Butler with the ball. That's just the difference I've seen in Toledo Christian from the last time I watched them. So much better help side defense. Again, that pass to Kreider, not taken by the girl guarding her, but help side rotated over, knocked it away. There's a nice job of getting the ball down low. The shot goes up, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the floor, and a great job of Kaylana Butler getting on the floor as she secures the ball. And I think we get a foul down low. Yeah, I, I believe Dylan Woods has a foul. He had a closed fist. And that mechanics for a foul by the official. It's going to be a foul on Callie Gregory. Here's the replay, Danny. There's the miss. Kreider has it. Again, swarmed by the Toledo Christian Eagles. And then there's the foul called 50-50 ball. We've seen that throughout the game. Foul, not a foul. Yeah, that one does go that. against Gregory. One foul, not a big concern there as far as being in any kind of foul trouble with Gregory just picking up her first. So here come the Eagles. This is Braden again. She'll kick it out. Three ball from the left side on the way, and it's good. Splish, splash. Macy Winsick knocks in the triple. That's her second of the night. And the Eagles lead 37 to 26. Here you see it just Great. way downtown, Dave. Yeah, dribble drive action. Again, Kendall Braden making her teammates better, finds Macy Winsick, and Crestview takes a timeout here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Carey Insurance. Carey Insurance in Grover Hill. They are proud to sponsor tonight's game. So a timeout by... <laughs> Toledo Christian and both of you and I are kind of baffled by that. We thought Crestview took the timeout. I think he's taking the timeout to just, you know, tell his girls, look, you're up 11. Let's not do this, this, or that. And they come in and, and show the 2-3 zone defensively. But you're right. Momentum is on Toledo Christian's side with the made shot. Sometimes you put the other team in that huddle where they can look at each other and say, gosh darn it, what are we doing here? Callie Gregory with the 12-footer. It goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Royal Davis. She'll lead the break down the middle. Here she comes in the middle of the floor, spins around. Three ball from the left side by Butler. It goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Knights. And a big time rebound by Lacey McCoy. As she comes down the right side. Guarded by Butler out top. She'll go Callie Gregory. Callie Gregory dribbled down in the middle. McCoy with the ball out top. She's guarded by number two, Kaylana Butler. 
They'll swing it around. Knights playing perimeter basketball right now, down 37-26. Callie Gregory with the ball, guarded by Winsick out top. She'll go behind her back, looking to try to three ball from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Butler. She leads the break down the middle of the floor. She's guarded by Macy Colwicki, and she'll pull it back out. That's where the Eagles will set up shop. And we've seen this throughout the game. Crestview struggling to find a little rhythm on offense. Give Toledo Christian credit, because that was the case in that possession right there. Gregory with the shot, but she wasn't in rhythm. Sure. Tried to find rhythm with the dribble. Unable to do so, the, the shot was short. Royal Davis with the fake shot there. <laughs> she knocks that one down, Dave. She's got some range because she was way far out there. And they're going to let her stay out there with the ball as they continue to lead 37-26 with 102 to go. Coach Gregory won it over and back, but he's not going to get the call. This is Butler with the ball. She looks inside. They'll swing it back around. They'll go back to Kendall Braden. There's a steal. Up and in, and she knocks it in. Ellie Klein with a steal and gives the Knights a little bit of relief. They're down 37-28. Stops a 7-0 run by Toledo Christian. Let's see what Kendall Braden does here. She's double teamed on the left side. She goes in the middle. Ball gets deflected by Lacey McCoy, and it'll go back to the Eagles. Entering the game now for Crestview is number 22, and it's Haley McCoy. And yes, that would be Lacey's sister. <laughs> she comes in. Yeah, that's right. Lacey's sister enters the game. So the Eagles will take it out underneath their basket with 29 seconds to go here in the third quarter. They're up to 37 28. Almost a five second call is the pressure from the Knights. We're down to 25 seconds. Try to swing the ball around. They'll go back to Royal Davis. Royal Davis will go middle. Three ball from the left side, and it's off the mark. It was down, and it goes out. So a break for the ninth. They're down 37-20. Here comes Callie Gregory trying to cut into that eagle lead. She gets a screen up top. She'll go to the opposite side. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down, and it's corralled by Butler. And that is how the third quarter is going to end. So after three quarters of play from the Elida Fieldhouse, the Fruiter Christian Eagles lead the Crestview Knights 37-28. We're watching girls high school basketball on WLSC. The tourney 10 at 10 is back all this week. Catch 10 games airing at 10 p.m. on WTLW and WLSN Tuesday through Saturday, part of our 24 tournament broadcast this week alone. Tune in, lose the remote, and enjoy, and listen to crazy guys like you and I, Dave, screaming about how much fun we're having. Absolutely. <laughs> Crazy, insane, intense high school basketball. Little Mecca, Elida Fieldhouse. Third quarter numbers tonight, 3 for 11 uh, from the field. 27% to lead a Christian at 50%, 4 for 8. The Knights 0 for 3 behind the arc. Toledo Christian 1 for 3. Rebound, 6 to 2 in favor of Toledo Christian. Turnovers. The Eagles had four, the Knights two. And they did a great job of keeping Kendall Braden in check that quarter, Dave. They absolutely did, and the Cali Gregory was on her, but again, Royal Davis became more of a factor for Toledo Christian offensively. There's a dribble drive there by Klein, and she misses on the shot. She gets a rebound, and there's going to be a foul on the side there. Coach Gregory a little concerned that Klein didn't get the foul on the penetration. There did seem to be a lot of body contact, but no calls. Everybody played through, but they do get a foul. They'll go against Kendall Braden, I believe, is who they called that one. Down nine. Crestview's got to think about tempo here a little bit and play a little more up-tempo, but unfortunately that might feed into exactly what Toledo Christian wants to do. Callie Gregor with a nice spin move at the foul line. She gets inside, knocks it in, and she cuts the lead to 37-30 with 7.28 to go. So the Knights right there within striking distance. They need to get on the defensive end. Stops and scores, stops and scores. If you're a Lady Knight fan, that's what's got to happen here. Now Callie Gregor, she's locked on Braden right now. Doesn't even know what's happening on the rest of the floor. And locked into 12. There you see the Eagles have pulled the ball way out. There's a nice dribble drive off the baseline there, and that's going to send, let's see who that foul, they're going to send number 35 for the Eagles, Maya Wellborn with a nice drive on the left side here. You see it as she goes straight up, and she is fouled. A lot of that drive. And they're going to call Haley McCoy on the foul right there. So Wellborn with the first shot. She misses that one. Dave, what, what, do you have her stats on free throws? Interesting to note who's going to be playing here late in this game for the Eagles. 
Yeah, I think Crestview would look at Wellborn as someone they'd want to foul, see what she does with the second. This is both. This is both of them, so a huge. Oh, there's a buzzer, an inadvertent buzzer. Not real sure what that was about. Here comes Callie Gregory, and she is guarded out top by Macy Winsick. And Coach Gregory's going to take a timeout. So it's 7 one to go. The Crestview Knights crawling back in this one down 37-30 right here on WOSN. We're back here at the Alina Fieldhouse with 7.01 to go. Dan Hibbert, Dave Bowen, Dusty Knights down 37-30 to the Toledo Christian Eagles. And Dave, I feel like a little momentum's on Crestview's side right now. They got a bucket and a stop here, so let's see what can happen. I agree. They, that timeout, Coach Gregory, I'm just sure he's talking about let's be efficient, let's pass up good for great, move the ball. And they're trying to go to the foul line. Lacey McCoy, nice back cut by Gregory. She had the opportunity and McCoy doesn't find her on the pass. Ball goes out of bounds. Tough turnover for the Lady Knights because, as you said, Gregory was available, just unable to find her. I love the play coming out of the timeout. I really do. It was the right play call. And here come the Knights. A little pressure. There's a near steal by Gregory. She does pick it up. Gregory takes the ball into the middle, and she's stolen. The ball is stolen away by Kaylana Butler. Here come the Eagles up the middle of the floor. Whoa, Davis with the ball. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. Jordan Rosales, a 27% three-point shooter, shot that one like a layup. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Big bucket for Toledo Christian. And a huge bucket as they were up seven, and I was surprised she took the shot. There's a shot goes up, and a nice drive on the baseline there by Haley McCoy as she is fouled by Royal Davis. Are you surprised she took the three from the up seven with six minutes to go? All about rhythm. We see McCoy here. She's not going to be denied. She attacks the basket and draws the personal foul. So Haley McCoy will go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walmart and Delta. It's called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. So 6-12 to go. Knights down 40-30. Second one on the way, and it's good. Cuts the lead to nine at 40-31. Crestview going to extend their defense, getting a sub on the made free throw shooter, so they can or free throw shot, so they can set their defense. Ball comes into Royal Davis, and it'll go back to Kaylana Butler. No one on Butler. She brings it down the floor. 6:04 to go. Rosales with the ball out top. She's guarded by Ellie Klein. Gets it back over to Royal Davis. Royal Davis goes middle of the floor. She'll take it up on the left side. She knocks it in, and she is fouled. Mackenzie Royal Davis gets to the bucket, scores the bucket, and she'll go to the free throw line for an old-fashioned throw. Goes hard to her left, and she's a right-handed shooter and does a nice job going opposite going what you would call the weak hand, but it's not weak there at all. She misses that free throw, makes it 42-31. So here comes Callie Gregory in the Knights. 5.45 to go here, down 42-31. Gregory guarded out top by Butler. She'll try to take it down to the baseline. They'll double team her on the baseline, and they'll say a held ball ball goes back to Toledo Christian. So just everything going Toledo Christian's way right now. Yeah, Danny, just a reoccurring theme there. Again, the Crestview ball handler, this time Callie Gregory gets shut off. And what happens? Help side rotates over, gets hands on the ball on the last dribble, creates the held ball uh, tie up, and in this situation, a turnover. So the Eagles will sit Mackenzie Royal Davis down. Every time she comes in the game, Dave, she is full of energy, and I, and I like the way they're using her right now. She's getting adequate rest, and when she's on the floor, she is really active. And here comes number 12, Kendall Braden. Been pretty quiet in the second half. There's a jumper from the left side, and there you see why she is automatic. Whoa. Kendall Braden knocks in the 15-foot jumper. She's got 21 to lead all scores, and it's 45-31 with 5.08 to go. You do not need to go to the tool chest because she's already got the hammer. Absolutely. That was a great shot. There you see Callie Gregory off the mark with a three ball from the left side, and the Knights are going to take a timeout. With 5.02 to go, the Knights are down 45-31. You're watching Girls Regional Action right here on WSA. Welcome back to the Ida Fieldhouse. Let's take a look at what we got on WSN this week. Thursday, Van Wert, St. Mary's, the boys' district semifinals, Shawnee and Defiance. I'll be broadcasting both of those games. Liberty Center, Ottawa Glandorf, girls' regional semifinals, a big showdown there of two number one seeds. Friday, the Division Four district finals from Elida. We've got 
Tri-Village and Marion Local in the girls' regional semifinals. Also, Rushi and Fort Laramie girls in the regional semifinals and the Division IV districts from Wapakoneta. So we'll probably have a MAC team or two in the districts of Wapakoneta. So I believe <laughs> uh, that's a given. I think so, too. So a whole slate of basketball for your viewing pleasure right here on WOSN. Best time of the year. I wrote an article about this for 419sports.com today about the records being set all over the state of Ohio. And here we've got an opportunity to see two of the best players in the state of Ohio. And uh, just, just great, great basketball. Yeah, 14 point lead right now. Time out there by Coach Gregory. They come out in a 2 2 1 press, do the Lady Knights. Toledo Christian, you know, you look at quarter splits and that can sometimes dictate or tell you a little bit about a game as Toledo Christian works the ball around. And we're gonna have a timeout by Coach Winsick. Coach Winsick, yeah, go ahead. You know, they've won every quarter. They won the first quarter by four, second quarter by three, third quarter by two, and now they've extended here in the fourth. Just been solid, methodical basketball for Toledo Christian. Crestfield has fought hard. They just haven't been able to come back from that four-point deficit and after the first quarter. Dave, I'm really, really impressed right now at Coach Wednesday. The way he's used his timeouts, uh, you know, it, it seems they, they've come at the best times possible when Crestview would make a run or when he would see his kids maybe letting up a little bit. He's done a really nice job tonight. Yeah, he has coached a great game tonight. And Coach Gregory has as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. But with only one timeout, you could say, hey, maybe we can take advantage of that. But, boy, these Toledo Christian Eagles, they've – They've got a lot of weapons out there on the floor. Yeah, they they got to, they got here. We talked about that earlier. They defeated Lakota. Let's take a look at the regional 14 semifinals here. They defeated Kansas Lakota 48-46. And you, you want to talk about a great game. We were talking with uh, Scoop Miller about that game earlier tonight. He said that could have went either way. So how good was Kansas Lakota? And then, the, you know, your Knights, they get a 10-point win in Columbus Grove and Hopewell Island. So lots of great basketball here. So the Eagles will take the ball out in front of the Crestview faithful. This is Kendall Braden with a dribble drive up the baseline. Misses the shot. Rebound comes down. It'll be corralled by Kaylana Butler. So everything going the Eagles' way here with 4.35 to go at 45-31. We'll go middle of the floor. Easy bucket. Missed the shot as number 10 for the Eagles. That was Reagan Markley. Misses the shot. Here come the Knights. Bring the ball back down. Down 45-31. Little 12-footer from the right side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Shot goes back up. Down back to the Knights, another opportunity, and they knock it in. Macy Kowicki knocks in the deuce to make it 45-33 with 4.04 to go. Uh, Coach Gregory is going to stay with a 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter trap, or three-quarter court trap, looking to find something. There's a jump from the foul line. Shot goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Knights. So back-to-back -back empty possessions for the Eagles. Here come the Knights. This is Lacey McCoy. She takes the shot up, and she misses off the mark. Rebound comes down. It goes back to number two, Kaylana Butler. Lacey McCoy took her eyes off the basket. She had a driving lane right away, and then when she realized that she had it, then she, her footwork just wasn't quite right. Ended up with the shot being short. 3.28 to go. Knights down 45-33. Skip pass to the corner. He'll bring it back out to Rosales. Rosales double teamed up top. She'll hold the ball. Very patient on offense are the Eagles. Pass goes to the middle or to the corner. Goes back to Rosales. Rosales will go back to Kendall Braden. Braden leads all scores with 21. They'll go back to Jordan in the middle. Taking a little time off the clock here with 3.01 to go in the fourth quarter. There's a steal by the Knights. Here comes Ellie Klein up the right side. Guarded by Jordan. She just Stopped and fell down. It got a little contact there, but they called the travel. They'll go back to the Eagles. The officiating has been consistent. They let them play a little bit, and as it's played out tonight, that's been advantage Toledo Christian. But Ellie Klein, a little contact, but not enough for a foul. The travel's called. Going to be Toledo Christian basketball. So 2:55 to go. Knights desperately needing some defensive help here to get a stop or two. Down 45-33. Ball goes back into Royal Davis. Royal Davis left-handed. Shot goes off the mark. Rebound comes down, and they're going to get Royal Davis on the foul. She tried to go for a rebound. That's still going to be a common foul, so we're not going to walk to the other end and shoot free throws. Crestview will have to bring it up the length of the court. Toledo Christian will be able to set their defense. 
So not a bad foul at all right, in this situation. Right, I was going to say, that was exactly what I was going to say. Not a bad foul at all if you're in the So here come the Knights. I'll bring the ball down the middle of the floor. Get it over to Macy Kowicki. Kowicki tries to drive in, takes off the left side. Tries to knock it in, but the ball goes off the mark, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. So Macy Kowicki, the senior for the Lady Knights, 5'6", uh -huh. guard. Going to go to the free throw line. Got to make them all right now in order to give yourself an opportunity. So Kowicki, you let the first one fly. And that goes off the mark. Lady's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw mm -hmm. Line is our sponsor tonight. Macy Kowicki just attacking the basket there. Again, finds a driving lane, which hasn't been there very often for the Lady Knights. Draws the foul. Into the game now for the Knights. It's Nevaeh Ross, number one. 5-4. Excuse me, the 5-2 sophomore. We're going to have a lane violation, lane violation on the Lady Knights. Stepped in early. 2.29 to go. Toledo Crystal leads 45-33. Knights in a full court and a man press here. As they get a held ball there and a nice job by number three, Macy Kowicki, of getting Johnny on the spot to get the held ball, to get the ball back to the Knights. She's fighting like a senior should right now. Doesn't want her season to end. Giving it everything she's got, Macy Kowicki. Knights will trigger the ball out in front of our booth here. Three ball on the way by McCoy. That goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's corralled in, and it's going to be a battle between Royal Davis and Nevaeh Ross. Ball goes back to the Eagles. Seems like all the hell balls went back to Toledo Christian. They've been the beneficiary of a lot of great plays tonight here. So Royal Davis gets the ball back to Alana Butler. Butler will bring it up against pressure. 2.14 to go. Ball goes to Royal Davis in the middle of the left side. And she misses the shot. And it's corralled by Who? Kendall Braden. Yeah, none other than. Kendall Braden, right spot, right time. Go back to the middle, back into McKenzie Royal Davis. Crestview has given so much energy to try and fight and get back in this game. I just think at this point in time, they're tanked. Yeah. Rosales with the ball up top, and we're going to get a foul up top, and that foul is going to go against Macy Kowicki. Still not in the one and one are the Eagles, so it's going to be sideline out of bounds for Toledo Christian. 146 to go. Ball triggered out in front of the scorer's table. Ball goes inside. I'll just bring it back out. No shot attempted. And they'll get the ball to their leader, Kendall Braden. She's pressured by two knights. They'll go dribble drive baseline. Shot goes off the mark. And they're going to get Lacey McCoy on a push underneath the basket. We see it here on the carry insurance replay. Nice back cut. And McCoy just puts her hands on her. That's her an easy always, call yeah. for the official in that situation. And Wensick's going to go to the free throw line. 33% free throw shooter. I see Wednesday at the line. First one on the way, and it's good. That puts her in double figures tonight. She's had a really nice game. She's got a couple of threes. Been Johnny on the spot for loose balls, and she's knocking them in from the free throw line. So doing everything her father asked her to do tonight. She makes it 46-33. Second one on the way, and it's good. Yeah, those, that percentage looks like it's about 50 points off. <laughs> right. Those were nice right. and true. Actually, she's got 11 on the night. 47-33 with 1.32 to go. McCoy from the three, or three line. Skip pass across the floor. Ball goes up. Goes off the mark. That three ball was by Ellie Klein. And we're going to say the ball goes back to Toledo Christian. One twenty-three to go. Toledo Christian up 47-33. Crestview continuing to try to get back in this game. Ball goes to Royal Davis as she brings the ball up against two Knights. She'll go to the middle of the floor. This is Kaylana Butler. She's guarded out top by Macy Kowicki. They're going to try to dribble this one out with 107 to go. And the foul is going to be called on Nevaeh Ross. Nicely done by Toledo Christian this fourth quarter. They have been purposeful with their offensive possessions. They've really made Crestview work hard defensively. And then when Crestview tried to trap, 
They just did a great job of being strong with the basketball, not dribbling it right away, seeing what they had. And as a result, they were either getting fouled or able to find uh, an open teammate at the basket or dribble drive to the hoop and score here in the fourth quarter. Jordan Rosales knocks the first one in. She's got seven on the night, second one on the way. And that is good also. She's got eight on the night, and it makes it 49-33 with 107 to go here in the fourth quarter. So the Knights with a little, little hope left here under one minute to go. Three ball on the way, and it's good. As you see Ellie Klein knock in the three. Coach Gregory calls the timeout. They get 49-36 with 55.9 seconds to go. So they're going to have to do some immediate fouling and try to get a steal here, Dave. And uh, you, you know, you're, you're down big, but I don't want to say there's no hope, but there's always a chance. Yeah, there's a chance. And we saw that, what, in the Iowa-Michigan yes, State I was game thinking, I was thinking weekend. that. Uh-huh. Take a look here. Toledo Christian will move on if they win this one and hold on like what we think will happen, they will play the winner of Hopewell Loudon Columbus Grove, which is our second game here tonight. So the NWC, another chance at uh, putting someone here in the regional finals. Yeah, Crestview, they've had an outstanding season, 21 and four. Looks like it's going to be 21 and five. Their season is going to end here at the regional. Uh, no shame in that. And they've played really, really hard tonight. Just not their night. Sometimes that happens. You got to tip your cap to your opponent and move on. And they'll bring three starters back next year, Dave. A good core of players, and I'm sure some uh, younger kids who are watching these girls play, and Callie Gregor will have her senior year, and I'm sure they'll uh, be right back here next year. So. And Coach Gregory, you know, that, that timeout, you're just letting your, your team know we're always going to look to find an edge, keep competing, see what we can do. So the Eagles will take the ball in. They'll get it out over to Kendall Braden. 53 seconds to go. Braden is double teamed up top. She'll swing it back around. This is Kalana Butler. Butler is fouled by Callie Gregory. Butler will go to the line. Butler goes to the line. She's got three points on the evening. Just been very impressed with this Toledo Christian Absolutely. basketball uh, team. Again, watch them play two years ago, a game we did on uh, WOSN. Just Fundamentally, they've done a lot of really nice things. Uh, both ends of the floor. The first possession of the game defensively, when I saw the girls with their guns out, they had their hands out yes. defensively in the paint when the ball was on the right side of the floor. I'm like, oh, they've, they've been coached well yeah. defensively, and it's played out through the entire game. So she misses the second one there, 50-36. We're down to 40 seconds. Callie Gregory with the ball out top over to McCoy. Swing it across the floor. Callie Gregory from the left side off the mark. Rebound comes down to Rosales. They'll get it to Royal Davis. And that will get the ball to Kendall Braden with 23 seconds to go. And Braden will just dribble it out and she'll go to the right side. And Coach Gregory trying to get some of his subs in here with 14 seconds to go. Down to 10 seconds. And the Toledo Christian Eagles will move on to the regional finals as they defeat the Crestview Knights 50 to 36, Dave. Great night. We had heard so many things about Kendall Braden, and those those things, those facts about her are true. All true. She is very, very impressive. Uh, ended up with 21 tonight for the Toledo Christian Eagles. And then Royal Davis back in the lineup after not playing two games. Her presence was felt once she entered the floor. And again, a nice, nice win for them. And we see it here. They move on on the bracket. They get to put their name on another line. The Crestview Lady Knights, outstanding season. Outstanding year. They finished third in the Northwest Conference. 21 and five overall. A team that had a lot of question marks coming in. And at the beginning of the year, they really struggled to answer those question marks. But, man, once they got it going, because uh, they were one and two to start the season, they got it going and just had a tremendous year. Great leadership by the players on the floor and the coaching staff, Coach Mark Gregory and his staff. Great, great season, Crestview Lady Knights District Champions. 
That'll do it from the Elida Fieldhouse in game one of the Division IV Regional Semifinals as the Toledo Christian Eagles knock off the Crestview Knights. For Dave Bowen, I'm Danny Holbrook, and our entire WSN crew saying good, good night and God bless.